So we have a TDS T20, the first of this generation. A little bit smaller than the than the TDS 2000. Looks like it's I don't know, maybe a half an inch narrower and a half an inch or three five eighths of an inch lower than the TDS 2000. Oops. And then about the same width. On a TDS 1000B, but the 1000B is a little bit taller, probably 5 8 again. And then the B looks like it's about the same size, probably virtually identical with the C model that's behind it. I like. I like this one actually because it has a continuous auto set and I'm able to use that from time to time. I find it pretty handy. But all of these, one thing that's really nice is they're super quiet running. And so that's really handy. And I guess TDS 200 next to it. The height difference is a little bit more obvious. That's kind of... So the old and the new. Looks like the display is about the same size. Of course, this one has half the bandwidth as the new one here. A lot of stuff under the surface. I'm sure that's quite different. I know the, the circuit boards are night and day different. Tech uses their custom ASICs. So these aren't truly a single processor. You know, these aren't like just 68,000 processor um, requiring the wave, you know, running the acquisition system and doing all the math and doing all the waveform calculations and so forth and presenting it they're actually the ASICs or separate processors that do the bulk of the work and the 68,000 processor is a supervisory the um, 68,000 is always seeing what the acquisition system is seeing. I doubt if the acquisition system is ever truly turned off even if you don't see the traces on the display. Thousand booted up it's a um, non-B, non-C variant color display. Definitely more washed out than the, the newer display back there on the C series. I believe the Active Matrix, you can look at things from a greater angle and so forth. So this one kind of gets washed out. This is still a pretty good display. As this stays sharp in the edges. This is a little bit better display. It will be the manufacturer doesn't even make this type anymore. So the display is nicer, but I wouldn't buy it just because of the display, that's for sure. It's of course the 2002 here, this one doesn't have the um, USB, so you have to if you're going to want to talk to it, you got to use the GPIP. I haven't played well with the GPIP as far as transfer speeds. Um, I would imagine that with the GPIP interface at this, although it's probably not spec how fast it is either, but I would imagine that this one could probably kick that, the, the newer one's ass when it comes to weight transfers. Um, I know a couple of times when I was doing the limit testing on that, it was transferring to the memory stick, and it pretty long, pretty big delay. You know, a lot longer than you'd think for an interface that's as fast as that can be, but it's a hobbled interface. They don't they don't want you to like get into the scope with it and have total access, so don't know how that plays into it, but anyhow there's a little bit of comparison of the differences as far as looks go. Um, but again they're all silent running machines so so, but if you can get one, like, if you can get one of the B's that has this continuous auto set, or the C that has a continuous auto set, that's kind of handy. It, um, it'll, it makes it easier to sync. Sometimes you're, like, if you're holding a camera, for example, and you're trying to probe a circuit board, um, you don't want to be constantly having to reach over and press auto set, right? So, but the, um, the old... The old school TDS T20 is still a smaller one. Excellent value for the money. Um, 
I, I have had several of these where I ended up spending like 200 bucks for 250 bucks. You just got to keep an eye out for them. You know, I don't think I spent more than 350, 400 for this guy here. This one was a thousand bucks, and you know I don't think I'll have any trouble selling it back for a thousand. This one I have the 60 megahertz is um, B1 USB. I think I paid like 350 for. So check this out. I'm going to do a going to look at the bandwidth on this for a minute. So I have a Fluke 6061A signal generator currently at a reference frequency of 10 megahertz and um, we can see that the frequency counter down here shows it's 10.0001 megahertz so I could bump this thing up to let's say 200 megahertz jump up to here and so it's telling me that it's um, 200.001 megahertz so if I go 001, so if I bump that up to 1, now it's showing that it's gone up just like over there, 200.002 megahertz or 3 megahertz. That level of accuracy is, um, it's for sure got a frequency counter in it. That's, that's, it's not doing that with um, a waveform measurement. It's, it's actually counting. It's actually counting. It's pretty good. So I'm going to look on bandwidth on channel 1, look at bandwidth. And I basically, the th this thing hasn't been warming up long enough, so if there's going to be a drift gradually. Uh, 100 millivolts on this. Now it's showing 100. 100 101, even though it's shown an amplitude here of 107. As this thing warms up, it'll drop a little bit more, a little bit more. Or I'll need to drop the value here to give me 100 millivolts until it stabilizes. But I'm, again, the signal generator like the one I was playing with earlier expects a 50 ohm load. And since this scope doesn't have an attenuator in it with a 50 ohm load, it's a 1 mega ohm, I have to put a 50 ohm load on it which is from tech so um what i'm looking for is my rms value up here which is um 101 right now 100 varying a little bit i want to see that it stays above 70.7 .7 millivolt out to the specified bandwidth of 200 megahertz and anything beyond that is just kind of bonus bandwidth so, again, I'll adjust my signal generator, so I'm doing the tens of megahertz. So as I bump, you, you don't want to see a lot of amplitude variations up and down. Gotta change the time base. I think that's, yeah, 2.5, that's the maximum. It'd be nice if this thing could um, go a little closer than 2.5 nanoseconds, but again, you'd have to buy the next model up. So we're seeing 98, 95, 93 millivolts. We're already up to, uh, like it says down there, 190, 190 megahertz. 200, we're still at 95, so we're losing very little signal. Very little signal loss, but notice how now we're at 220, and the uh, signal starts to fall off. 230 falling off still more 72 what did I say 70.7 so um that's pretty close to our bandwidth on this one is 240 um, we can use the we can use the acquire menu you can average it I guess then hit me measurement again to get a little more stable less bouncy reading it looks like if I take my bright eye my um, bright digit thing and I just change it at one megahertz at a time. Oops, I'm going down. I want to be going up. Sorry. So that's so 241 megahertz roughly um, is the bandwidth for channel one on this.
quick and dirty. I mean, let's go back to 10 megahertz and let's see how my um, my system is um, heating up. So I go back there. Also, we'll go um, acquisition to to normal, so we're comparing comparing oranges to oranges. Measure 101 more so. So I would go to frequent or not frequency amplitude and drop that down one more to get us closer to the ideal 100. So this thing's still warming up. So anyhow, that's a little bandwidth test. So this thing's giving us a very honest tech stuff. It's typically like that, my little 60 megahertz version of this. Um, it does um, about 87 megahertz bandwidth. Sure, uh, 100 megahertz TDS 2000 ish scope would always be giving you around 120 or 130 megahertz if it's a 100 megahertz scope bandwidth. So, always a good value in that way. What the heck, how far out will this thing trigger? Let's find out. Let's go ahead and just do the vertical scale for speed, uh, the max, which is 2.5 nanoseconds. Let's go over here to frequency. And, and I'll start doing it in 100 megahertz steps. So there we are at 300 megahertz. You can tell there's a sine wave. Plenty of jitter. 400. Yeah, who knows what that is. Let's play. The, we, nah, I don't know if we want to play the scale or not. We could bump it up and see what the hell. Yeah, it's just freaking it out. Probably doesn't have a lock. See the frequency counter saying 485, 551 megahertz, etc. When it's actually 400, so I can't really lock on to that. But. 300 megahertz, it's not having a problem seeing. So anyhow, to summarize, TDS 2024C, four channels, 200 megahertz of bandwidth, two gig samples on each channel simultaneously, um, nice color display that you can see under the bright light of the LED lights that I'm testing out, which I'm liking. LEDs have came a long way in the last couple of years. And it's a pretty nice little scope for the desk. Hope you enjoyed the um, the little presentation. Sorry about the crappy camera, lack of focus, and constant movement. Hope you didn't get seasick. Bye.